Welcome to OCN Broadcasting. You're watching a program called Discovering the Bible, and I'm your host, Pastor Nick. And uh, we'd like you to uh, gather your friends around the, uh, the screen, and uh, we're about to study uh, one of the books in the New Testament, <clears throat> which is called Ephesians, and it was written by the Apostle Paul. And uh, we're doing a series, and we're looking at the, the, uh, the epistle called Ephesians, and we're taking our time going through it kind of line by line and, and uh, di word by word so that we can give you the, some of the background of the book and a deeper understanding of the word uh, from the word. So if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to uh, Ephesians, which is in the New Testament. And it uh, is right before the book of uh, Philippians. And uh, if I could have uh, uh, slide number one on the screen for just a minute. Our, uh, our, uh, well, our, that's, that's not the right slide. It's slide number one. Uh, it's a, th there it is. It's our foundational scripture uh, verse that we've been uh, teaching on for the last uh, several programs. Uh, this is uh, lesson number three in the series. And uh, the, our foundational scripture is found in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, and it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that's such a powerful verse. Um, Paul is comparing uh, Ephesus uh, to our blessings that we have uh, in the spiritual realm. And to give you a, bit, a little bit of background, Ephesus was a very important uh, trading center in, uh, in the uh, early church years. And it was like the bank of, of uh, Asia Minor. And uh, there was a lot of wealth there, a lot of wealthy people, and um, they were no strangers to prosperity and wealth. And Paul, in this epistle, what he does is he compares the grandeur of that particular city and that particular uh, part in history compared to the benefits that we have in the spiritual realm. And Paul says there's just no comparison, that we have so many more blessings and so many more benefits than those people did in this great city of Ephesus. It'd kind of be comparable to maybe New York City that we have here in the United States, a big mega business center, trading center. Now, um, uh, Ephesus was um, a place where, um, there was a lot of uh, religions, and uh, Paul wanted to uh, plant a church, and he did plant a church in Ephesus, and to the new believers, to those um, uh, Jewish folks and Gentile folks that uh, came into the early church, uh, they needed to have an understanding of um, not only of the Bible, but some key concepts to distinguish uh, the early church with um, the civilization or the society that was going on at the time. And so, uh, since we're talking about blessings, can I have slide number two? Slide number two uh, lists some of the blessings. And what they are is there are divine privileges and resources that are now available to those who have put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And some of those privileges are uh, is a pardon or forgiveness for our sins, peace, redemption. We've been redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ from any kind of uh, punishment or any kind of slavery that, that we might be experiencing in the, in the spiritual realm. Adoption, sanctification, eternal life, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit 
and the promises of God. Now, we're going to go into some of these blessings as we study the book of Ephesians, and uh, they're very exciting, and uh, there may be some of you that this is all new for you, and you really don't understand what's available to be a son or a daughter in the kingdom of God. And uh, my, my, my job, my duty, is to uh, explain and to expound uh, some of these blessings to you. Um, now, um, uh, you might say, uh, slide number three, please. Uh, slide number three says, what is the source of our blessings? Because we need to know that in order to uh, enjoy our benefits and to understand our benefits. And um, the, the source of the blessings or the benefits come from God the Father through our, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, when you were born again, you became eligible for these blessings. And so later on in the program, we're going to show you and lead you in a prayer uh, so that you can become, so that you can enter into the family of God, uh, uh, whether you're um, an adult or whether you're a youth or whether you're a child or whatever the age is in the spiritual realm, it really doesn't matter. The important thing is to be, uh, to come into the, the family of God and to enjoy fellowship with, with God the Father through Jesus and to be able to access some of these blessings. Now, um, one of the great promises in the Bible is found in another epistle, which I'm going to read to you, and we don't, we don't have it on the screen tonight, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you. It's found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And that verse says, But my God shall supply all of your need through his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And what that promise says is that God is promising to meet all of your needs, whether it's shelter, food, a place to live, a job, a home, a car, whatever it might be, God is promising us in this verse that he is, is uh, uh, obliged to, uh, to meet these needs for us, for those who are in the family of God, for those who have uh, given their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, one word of caution, uh, once you get into the family of God, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be uh, roses and lollipops. There's, there's a lot of things that do happen uh, in our situation here uh, as we live out our lives because we're in a, a fallen condition spiritually. And uh, we don't have time to expound on that today, but, but just to say that, that there are no guarantees that we're not going to experience pain or we're not going to experience maybe degrees of, of, of poverty along with our walk with the Lord. But we need to look to the promises, and those promises will give us the victory that we need to have a prosperous life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Holy Spirit is mentioned throughout the book of Ephesians and throughout the New Testament, and really throughout the whole Bible, but specifically in the New Testament. And he's mentioned many, many times here in the book of Ephesians. And by when you give your heart to the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes into your, into your spirit being, into your heart, and he's there to come alongside of you to be a guide, to be an, uh, a, a teacher, and to give you wisdom, the wisdom of God that you, that you need to conduct a, a, a victorious life uh, as, you, as you journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the ways that we access uh, these blessings and these benefits is through the indwelling uh, power of the Holy Spirit, because he's, he's the way that these blessings come down from heaven through us into the natural, into our lives, uh, so, that, so that we can get answers to prayer, we can have breakthroughs, we can, uh, we can see things change, the atmosphere change and things change. Uh, for example, if you're believing for a job or you're believing for uh, your wayward kids to come back to the Lord and come back into fellowship with yourself and so forth, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's through the Holy Spirit that, that, these, that this wealth, so to speak, that Paul is talking about actually comes down from heaven and comes into 
your life into your, your walk, so to speak, into your hands, so to speak. Can I have uh, slide number four? Slide number four tells us that we have a, a dual citizenship. The Bible talks about this, that we have our life in the natural as we live out, you know, our jobs, our family, um, it, uh, all the little details that we have in our, our natural life. But the Bible says that when we become born again and we become born into the family of God, that we also have a, a life in the spirit realm. And we have uh, benefits that are in the heavenlies that need to come down to us uh, through faith, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and through believing the promises of God. Uh, that's how uh, these benefits and these blessings come down to us so that we can experience them and enjoy them. Now, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, we're not quite there yet, but I just want to jump ahead for a moment to tell you about Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Uh, it says that, uh, that uh, he has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus. Now, that is our position in the spiritual realm. There is a spiritual realm that we cannot see, and in that spiritual realm is uh, the heavenlies, where God the Father is and, and uh, the believers that have gone on. But there's also uh, a place that we call the second heaven, where, where um, uh, Satan is and where all of the demonic activity is. And so, um, we, we are uh, a subject to uh, spiritual warfare and uh, some things that uh, maybe we don't especially want or ask for, but they may come our way. And the Bible addresses that, and, and we have ways uh, to overcome uh, these assignments and overcome uh, some of these uh, problems that may come our way. And... Um, but the point is, we, we have a spiritual position, and that position is with the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's no higher position. Uh, we're, we're actually above uh, the fallen angels, and we're, of course, we're above the animal uh, kingdom and so forth. And so we do have uh, certain privileges and, and a status for those who are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And we'll be, we'll be talking about that as we... Uh, study the book of Ephesians and as we get into it a little bit uh, more in depth. But so far, uh, in the previous teachings and in today's teaching, we're just kind of launching into it. We're just in chapter 1, and um, we may get to uh, through verse 5 today. <laughs> and uh, in, in chapter 1, we have um, uh, many, many, um, many verses uh, 23 of them. So <laughs> we've got a lot of ground to cover in future programs, and that's going to be real exciting. And uh, I hope that you'll be with us through the whole book of Ephesians, and especially chapter 1. Now, in previous chapters, we talked about some of the blessings that are mentioned here in the book of Ephesians that are, that are available to those who uh, know the Lord Jesus Christ or in family of God. And blessing number one is found in um, verse four. And that says that, that he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world. So the number one blessing that we've looked at is that God chose us. It wasn't the other way around. Um, to make a distinction, um, religion, in, in a nutshell, and to boil it down, is man's effort to get in touch with God and to have a relationship with God, but it's generated mainly by, by man. Christianity is God's way of reaching us, and we're going to see as we study this book that God has done a lot of things in advance uh, for us that uh, make it possible for us to have a victorious, prosperous life in the Lord Jesus Christ while we're while we're in our sojourn here on this earth. Also, we looked at blessing number two, which is found in uh, verse five, uh, let's see, verse five, where it says that we have been adopted into the family of God. 
And that's very powerful. We're going to spend a little time in, on verse 5 today because there's just so much here that I don't want to rush through it or to uh, minimize it. But um, the whole concept of adoption is very important. Uh, in, in our life here on earth and in our society, we have a process called adoption where uh, a couple or an individual can adopt another person. And the thing that's so profound about that is that that person that's about to be adopted is chosen by the people that are initiating the adoption process. In other words, they choose and they go ahead with the adoption process, which is a legal process. And at the end of that process, that person, that uh, man or woman or that child or daughter that is adopted comes into that family and is entitled to all of the benefits of that family and any inheritances of that family, as opposed to the normal course of events when uh, a man and woman uh, come together and a child is born, and that child is born into that family through the, um, the way that God has ordained it, through, the, uh, through, the, through marriage, and that, that son or daughter uh, naturally comes into that family. There's, there, there is, I suppose, some legal uh, matters about it, but they don't have to go to court for that child or that daughter to become part of that family. It's just kind of an automatic process that God has set up. And then that, that son or daughter uh, bears the name of that family, has all the benefits of that family and privileges of that family. And so what makes this so special is that God not only chose you, but those who have accepted Jesus Christ, he's adopted you into the family of God, Amen. which is very profound because he's taking the initiative to adopt you, to adopt me, to adopt all that are in the, the body of Christ today, which is, which is wonderful, which is very, very exciting. Now, the way that we get into the family of God is through a process which we call salvation, or the Bible calls it being born again. And I want to take some time today to um, give you an example of what it means to be born again. And we're going to go to the Gospel of John. And in the Gospel of John, we have, in chapter 3, we have this situation where where uh, there's this Pharisee named Nicodemus. And so for those of you that have a Bible, I'd like you to open up your Bibles and go to John chapter 3. And we're going to look at some verses uh, from the beginning, which is uh, John chapter uh, 3, verse 1. And we're going to go through maybe uh, verse 10 or so today because it's so important to understand the whole concept of of being born again and, and what that means in the spiritual realm. If we look at verse number one, it says that, that uh, there was a man who was a Pharisee and his name was Nicodemus and he was the ruler of the, of the Jews at, the, at that time. Verse number two is really interesting. It says, this man came to Jesus by night. And so you might ask, well, why did he come to him at night? And the reason is, is because at the time of, of Jesus' ministry, um, the Pharisees uh, got very upset with Jesus, almost to the point of wanting to, to kill him. And the reason was because Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, to be equal with God. And in that Jewish religion and that Jewish culture, anybody that, any man that made that claim, they used a term called blasphemy. And if you were guilty of blasphemy, that would, that would, uh, that would be, you'd be subject to death. And so the Pharisees were trying to trick Jesus or to try to catch him in a form of blasphemy so they could uh, legally uh, put him to death and uh, he wouldn't uh, upset anything that they were doing because it was a, Jesus became very controversial as far as the Pharisees were concerned. And so Nicodemus, he knew of Jesus. And in uh, verse um, uh, 3 is very profound. Uh, 
uh, or excuse me, in verse number two, uh, Nicodemus says, uh, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with them. So uh, Nicodemus had heard of the ministry of Jesus. Uh, he was aware of miracles and signs and wonders that uh, Jesus was able to do in his ministry. And so he wanted to meet Jesus firsthand to, to really be sure that he was really the Messiah, the promised Messiah that, that um, was, was foretold uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Old Testament. And so, but he didn't want anybody else, any other Pharisees to know about this meeting. And so that's why he met with him uh, at night. So he wouldn't be seen with, with Jesus. But the point was, he took the initiative to seek Jesus out and to find out uh, for sure that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. And that's what we do today. We find ourselves seeking the presence of Jesus and, and really in our minds determining that he really is the Son of God, that he really does operate in the miraculous, that he can do anything. The Bible says that without, uh, with God, nothing is impossible. And so that's our quest today. And for those of us that have already accepted the Lord Jesus, uh, we know that to be true. But you may be watching today and you may have some questions and you may not know much about Jesus. Maybe you've never heard the name of Jesus before. So what we wanna do is introduce you to Jesus, uh, the Lord and Savior. And uh, I know it's gonna change your life before we get to the end of the program here. And so the point is, is that, that Jesus uh, did operate in the miraculous, the supernatural, because he was fully God and fully man. And so uh, this was real interesting. Uh, in verse number four, Nicodemus said, oh, and Jesus said in, excuse me, in verse three, that uh, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And there's that term born again, and we're gonna, we're gonna see what it means in just a minute. In verse number four, Nicodemus said, well, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? And here we have uh, a man who's trying to understand spiritual things without spiritual wisdom and without the help of the Holy Spirit. And he's trying to imagine, well, how can you be born again if you're an adult, you know, and you're six feet tall and, uh, you know, 200 pounds, that kind of a thing. But Jesus is saying, no, this is a spiritual matter. Just like you were born into a family in the natural and you were a little baby and then you went through adolescence and you went through adulthood, the same thing is true in the spiritual realm. You need to be born into the family of God and when you come into the family of God, you are like a little baby in the spirit realm. And then as you grow and mature in the word and in the Lord Jesus Christ, you pass through an adolescent stage, a childhood stage, an adolescent stage, and eventually you, you, you reach adulthood. And so what he's, what he's saying is that there's a parallel between the natural progression uh, and maturity, and, there's a na and then there's a, another parallel uh, progression in the spiritual realm. But Nicodemus didn't understand that. And the reason he didn't understand it because this was brand new revelation from, from Jesus, from the Messiah, from the Son of God. Nicodemus had never heard of this before, and so that's why he was having a hard time grasping it. And I hope today that as you watch this program that, that you will come to accept things by faith, and maybe you won't have total understanding, but the point is you can release your faith, you can act in faith, and the Holy Spirit will reveal the truths of God to you as you go along in your journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know we're kind of getting to the end of our time today, so I do want to give you an opportunity to say a prayer with me so that you can uh, uh, become a son or daughter in the body of Christ. And I'd like you right now to, um, to uh, look into your screen and to say these words with me, uh, those of you who want to accept Jesus, those of you who want to become uh, uh, born again and to enter into the family of God, 
uh, say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, and um, I need you in my life. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died on Calvary and paid the penalty for my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and into my life and to uh, show me the ways of God, release the wisdom of God in my life, and direct my steps, direct my path. The Bible says in, in uh, Revelation that the Lord Jesus stands at the door and he's knocking. He's knocking at the door of your heart and he wants to come into your heart, but he wants you to invite him into your heart. And he says that if you open the door and you invite me in, that I will come and fellowship with you. I will sup with you, have supper with you uh, if you do that. And so uh, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I, I make you Lord of my life. I surrender to you. And I ask you through the power of the Holy Spirit to reveal your will to me and reveal the destiny that you have in view for me. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, we want to welcome you into the family of God. And your life is about to change for the better. It will never be the same. It will always be better than it, than it was up until this moment in time. And we'd like you to communicate with us here at, at uh, OCN Broadcasting. Uh, on your screen, you'll see uh, the website, uh, which is uh, www.ocnbroadcasting.com. And when you get to that uh, website, uh, there's a place where you can communicate with us uh, by email and by internet. And uh, that's one way to do it. There's also a P.O. box there where you can write to us. And uh, whether you write to us or whether you contact us uh, by email, uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, if you need ma materials, just request those materials and we'll try to get you uh, a Bible or some materials into your hands so that you can understand the Bible and that you can uh, start your journey with the Lord Jesus Christ on a sound footing. Also, we want to tell you about uh, Roku, and uh, OCN Broadcasting is on Roku now, the, the Roku platform. And you might say, well, what, what is Roku? Roku is a little device that's about this big, and uh, you can buy it at an electronic store, and it's fairly inexpensive. And what that does is that it, it, it transfers um, the information from your internet, from your computer, uh, to your um, high definition screen at home or, or to your uh, television screen at home. And so it's, it's wonderful because it's, it's better to view, more people can view, your family can gather and watch OCN Broadcasting and, and all, of the, all of the programs that we have here at OCN Broadcasting. And, um, and once you uh, purchase this little unit, there's no further costs after that. And when you go to Roku, when you select uh, OCN Broadcasting, it's totally free. And so you'll have um, the broadcasting, our, our Christian television, 24-7 that's available to you. So we encourage you to get the little Roku unit and to watch us on Roku uh, uh, as, we go, as we go forward. And uh, today, uh, we all, I always have a Bible verse of the day uh, for you, and it's not necessarily uh, in the... the the passage that we're, we're studying today, which is Ephesians. But I'm going to give you that Bible verse. And uh, if I could have uh, screen number, uh, uh, number six, the Bible verse of the day. Uh, it's found in um, the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Uh, and it's in verse 16. And I'm going to read it to you because it's very powerful. This is probably one of the most significant Bible verses in the whole New Testament. But, and what it says is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. And we saw the, the application of this verse in our study today with Nicodemus, that he uh, was curious and was interested in uh, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, 
And he was able to have that relationship with Jesus, just as those of you who prayed the prayer today with me, uh, you now have, you have been born again, you now have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But one of the things I want to mention in this verse is that God has taken the initiative. It says, for God so loved the world. Do you know that, that he loves uh, those who don't even believe in him, those who find themselves in other religions, in other parts of the world, and so forth. He already loves you, and he wants to have a relationship with you. And this verse here says that he has taken the initiative to love the world even before you were born. That's how much God wants to have a relationship with you today. And it says that he gave his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So this is very powerful. If you have a Bible, I want you to underline it or highlight it and memorize it because it's, it's, it's going to be um, a key life Bible verse for you in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. So today, as we come to the end of the program, we thank you for watching the program. This is Discover the Bible. I'm Pastor Nick, and we also encourage you to watch the other programs that are available on OCN Broadcasting Network. And we're here 24-7 uh, for you. And uh, I know you're gonna be blessed. Keep tuning in, keep watching us, and send in those love gifts, large or small. We need your help so that we can reach as many people as possible uh, in this hour that we find ourselves. And so until next time, God bless you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next program.